presentation is our budget adoption. And for, for those of you in the audience or at home, just so you know, if you go back on board docs, you can find different pieces of the budget over time. We, pre we uh, present different departments in different weeks leading up to the final budget presentation. So, and you, this video posted to the website too. Every video, <laughs> each presentation, each presentation gets posted to our yes. district website. Uh, okay. Yes. Awesome. Thank you. Board docs or the district website. And if you have any questions, please reach out. And I'll let Enrique take it from here. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening. Um, as always, I want to start with the beautiful pictures that our high school and middle school students uh, do during their day-to-day -day operations in, uh, in the art classes. So um, here we have two beautiful pictures before you get to the boring part. So let's get to, let's get to the boring part. Um, I'd like to start by talking a little bit about the big increases and decreases um, that are going from one year to the other one and explain them. Uh, obviously, the, the, biggest the, the biggest increase, not in percentage, but in money, is for instructional salaries. And that's because that's our, um, our instructional salaries represents with benefits about 60 to 70 percent of our budget. And this includes teachers, uh, guidance counselors, uh, social workers, and um, principals and assistant principals in the high school. Um, this is a contractual agreement uh, with the two different unions, and that will be an increase of close to a million dollars for next year. The next one is benefits. Um, benefits is for the whole staff, and this includes uh, health insurance, workers' compensation, unemployment, um, other benefits uh, that we provide, that the district provides for us, for the employees. And that will be an increase of about $941,000. Out of these $941,000, about $840 comes from health insurance. Unfortunately, health insurance continues to grow at um, very high number percentages and the increase this year is um, 5%. Um, unfortunately, we don't expect um, for these numbers to go down. Um, on a side point, I am going to ask everyone not to forget to re uh, we go back and re-enter for health insurance because um, we uh, the health insurance consortium is changing and are, is asking to re-enlist everyone that uh, uh, that is insured by us. Um, well, back to this. Plan, uh, plan maintenance and security is an increase of one hundred and ninety thousand dollars. Um, that includes mainly our uh, custodians and our security people and uh, everything that we need to, to have these uh, facilities in working order. Um, transportation um, is going to be an increase of $200,000 as we discussed during the transportation uh, budget night. Uh, we are hiring four halves uh, drivers. Uh, we're called, uh, that means that we're hiring four new people, but half of them are going to be custodians and the other half are going to be drivers. And then the good news is that um, our debt and capital projects, um, uh, the, the payments are going to decrease by $2.1 million. And that's because this year we have two bonds, the 2000 and 2002 bonds uh, that matures. Um, so this is, uh, this is very good news because hopefully with this money, um, we will be able to go for a capital project in one or two years without an increase in the <clears throat> tax, in the tax levy and the tax rate for the for the community. 
Um, the next, the next, um, the, the next slide is the largest increase by account goal. And I said, uh, as I said, health insurance uh, is going up uh, about $840,000. Uh, then we have the business administration contractual that is going up $181,000. And don't think that that's for me. It's because uh, mm -hmm. uh, last year the court decided to hire the second SRO after the budget was passed. So this is just budget to budget, and now it's included in the budget, and that's $175,000. So the the real increase for my um, uh, for my department <coughs> is really six thousand um, dollars. The next one is teacher salaries for pre-K, and this is exactly the same situation where um, we decided to to give the teacher positions to um, Dr. Lefebvre and. Uh, 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 Mr. Manuelo, but originally we thought that they were going to be um, step one teachers. Um, district transportation also, um, that's an increase like uh, I mentioned. Um, then computer services from BOSIS is an increase of 127, but really it's just the way we're going to to start uh, spending money in technology rather than doing it with um, a, a other, uh, other companies who are going to be doing it with policies. And finally, social security that obviously goes up as our salaries go, go up. The largest decreases, like, uh, like I said, is transfer to other funds. Um, when we pay, when we pay debt and interest, we don't pay it out of our operational budget. We need to transfer it to the capital budget, and that's the that's the transfer. Um, the capital project is just a reduction because last year we put one hundred and fifty thousand dollars for the BB area, <coughs> and this year we didn't have to do it. And then. Um, teacher salaries that were reducing teachers um, like uh, uh, in Frangeline C and in DV, and finally workers' compensation. Um, the consortium in the workers' compensation has done very well, so they dividend out um, about $120,000 for us. I decided only to use 78000 so I can leave some dry powder for next year. So the summary budget. Um, if you remember January 11, um, uh, uh, we were talking about a budget for, of $88.1 million. And um, we will ask the or to approve a budget for 88 million zero five one to 87, which is an increase of 1.4 million dollars or 1.6 percent. That will bring us a tax levy of 50 million dollars compared to 50 million 53 uh, 50 million oh five last year. So it's an increase of one percent in the tax levy. Uh, one ten zero point seven percent. Point one. Point one. Well, I'm, I'm really sorry. <laughs> the other point nine is for my salary. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, point zero point one percent. Um, in the next, the next slide, uh, the next slide, I just want to show you. Um, the budget, the tax levy, and the tax cap for us over time. As you can see, our budget and tax levy uh, have been growing very little. And this year, uh, as I will explain later, our tax cap is going down, down substantially. Um, our tax caps in the past three years were uh, between, uh, could have been between, or were between, seven and 12 percent but obviously we didn't raise the taxes even close to those amounts and um, 
there you can compare it with inflation, New York State tax cap, and like I said, double tax cap. In the next, in the next uh, graph, you can see our increases in budget and taxes. And uh, as you can see, um, we we we've, we've tried very hard since the announcement of the closure of uh, Indian Pond to be fiscally responsible. And I think uh, uh, for this year, uh, bringing a 0.01% increase. Um, talks about that responsibility. So these are our revenues, and our revenues are divided in several, part, in several parts. Obviously, the most important is tax levy. Like I said, that's $50 million. Then uh, state aid increased about $4 million this year compared to last year, and that for two main reasons. Reason number one is uh, our wealth ratio went down. We used to be a wealth, we used to have a wealth ratio of 1.6 percent, 1.6, meaning that we were 60 percent above the average of the school district in the state of New York, due to the closure of Indian Point and the reduction of the pilot payments. Now we are at 1.39 percent. So that increase our that decrease our wealth ratio and the biggest part of the foundation aid is based on the wealth ratio of the districts. Um, on the other hand, all the all the school districts in New York State uh, were fully funded for foundation aid, including all. So a portion of these four million dollars was because of the fully funded and the other one because our wealth ratio went down. OCC aids is the money that we received the following year based on uh, the, the services that we use from OCC the prior year. Um, transfers is very little. It's basically um, we pay uh, uh, we pay the food service uh, out of the operating budget, but because uh, they have their own fund, then they reimburse us at the end of the year. Um, sales tax is the PAT, the tax that we pay in, in the county of Westchester. So every time when uh, you see that 875%, at least you can say, well, it goes to the school district, so it's not that bad. Fund balance. Um, I'll explain fund balance a little bit later, but fund balance is going to be $2.6 million. And then uh, we have other income of $2 million that includes interest income and the tuition students for our um, ABC and St. Lord program. Pilots, if you remember, we still have other pilots. We still have uh, the Bresco, non Bresco pilot. And, um, uh, this year, I'm sorry, next year, we just signed an agreement with Holtec that we will get $4 million in, in pilot payments from Holtec. And finally, the cessation fund, which is the fund um, that we draw money every year because of the closure of Indian Point. <laughs> By law, I need to show our expenses uh, to, in, in three different categories. Um, administrative, which is basically uh, principals, assistant principals, and central office. Uh, that represents about 7% of our budget. Then capital, that represents the interest and the cost of maintaining our facilities. That represents 10%. And the rest is basically the cost of instructional, uh, the regional instructional and education of our children. And that, that's going to be 83% of our budget. Uh, the board uh, doesn't have a policy, but we always target at least an 80% uh, part of the budget to go to students in, in that category. So um, 
I explain all uh, uh, how to divide um, how we divide our revenues, um, what we call non-property tax revenues, which are all the revenues besides our tax levy. That's going to be 37.9 million dollars, or an increase of 3.7 percent. Our budget, as I mentioned, is 88.0 million, but that's an increase of 1.6 percent. The tax levy, an increase of 0.1 percent, and our tax cap. That really, like I said, our tax cap is really meaningful for us just because of those movements from uh, the pilots. Every dollar that uh, um, our pilots reduce is a, a dollar that I can increase in my in my tax cap. So as you can see, from last year to this year, um, the tax cap was reduced by 18.5 percent. Um, um, uh, our contingent budget, if we go into contingent, then we increase about three and a half percent compared to last year. I would like to touch on the contingent budget because it's important that everyone understand what it means. Um, what's the contingent budget? If the budget fails on May 16, the board has two alternatives. Alternative number one is bring, bring forth a new budget. If that happens, the new budget will be substantially lower, and that will reduce staff and increase class sizes. The second option is for the board to decide to go and adopt a contingency budget right away. If that happens also, there's going to be reduction on staff, increase in class size, sizes, um, on their New York State rules, uh, only your ordinary contingency expenses will be allowed. That means that no equipment purchases, uh, no outside organizations are allowed to use our facilities, and there will be no transportation other than from home to school to home. So um, that's what contingent budget is. Um, um, uh, please review this very carefully. Finally, I want to show um, a lot of numbers that no one understands. Sometimes I don't even understand them myself. But the important number is at the bottom. The last row that says how much your tax rate is going to increase depending where you are, in the town of Portland or in the city of Lipsky. And the good news is that for next year, the town of Portland will have a decrease of 0.15% in their tax rate and the city of Big Hill of 1.48. And let me just mention that this is preliminary because between now and when we set the rates, um, the, both the town and the city of Big Hill are still getting uh, tax resources and everything, so the the assessment rations might, might drop between now and then. But um, this is the preliminary number that I would like to show the community. So what does that mean for anyone in the community? Um, the average assessed value in the community for both the town of Portland and the city of Pigskin is about $7,700 of assessed value. So that means that for the town of Portland, there's going to be an increase of $14 for the year in their taxes, while for the city of Big Scale, it's going to be $69. And before we move to our next uh, slide, I will take the comment because the next slide is when the board approves the project. So before they, uh, they you guys approve the project, if you have any questions, then I'll, I can answer. I just, oh, sorry, that's very loud. <laughs> I just want to say, you know, thank you for so much, Enrique and, and Dr. Laura. 
This has been such an experience, this budget. I'm so proud of it, and I'm especially proud of our finance committee. Um, I was on the committee last year, and then I was on the committee this year, and it was wildly different and super exciting, and I think that we really, really dive deep rather than just rolling forward and rolling forward. Um, we got creative, we looked into it, we looked at every little nook and cranny, we had so much discussion, and I'm just so thankful um, for our finance committee, and I'm really proud of the budget that we're putting out this year. So if anyone has questions, I know I don't I don't, okay. I don't. I, I just want to make sure I'm making because it looked like the numbers were negative. Does that mean we're going to be paying less taxes? No. Than the party? You are going, yes. The results okay. slightly, slightly if less. Look, if, if your it's house, not an increase, it's a decrease. Yep. If your taxes. house is worth 7700 in assessed value, yep. and these days, your, your tax bill, instead of being 1000 um one, I'm sorry, instead of being $8,903, your taxes are going to be $8,889. Okay. Which is, I mean, it's fantastic. Yes. And what you know, I've seen over the years and what our 10 year projections were, like that's great. I know our, our cessation fund is gonna to continue to decrease and we're gonna to have to be diligent on this every year, but to see that this year is fantastic and, and it just says a lot for the Finance Committee and what you've all done. And Dr. Laura, thank you very much for, for finding a lot of this. My understanding is that it's no cuts to any programs in addition, sure. which is fantastic. We added in library specialists yep, so we and elementary. Include programs. So mm -hmm. there's, there's just, you know, I can't say enough positive things about it. So, you know, thank you. And I'll go out and get a Starbucks with that 14 year old. You invite me to for free. I will. I will. I'll get the grande. Go ahead. Okay. Um, I have two questions. Um, the first is to clarify about the teachers. So, Dr. Laura talked about adding a librarian and a new music teacher, but then on page five, you've got decreases of 2K to 6 teachers. So can, uh, between the two of you, can you clarify what teachers we're adding and what we're decreasing this year? The way I do the budget is originally when we counted the number of class sizes, the number of teachers in each class, it was two reductions, one in each elementary school. So uh, my understanding is that due to let, uh, uh, reduce enrollment, there's going to be a reduction of one teacher in each of those elementary schools. And but we're still adding the other two teachers mm -hmm. that you did. Oh, yeah. Right. The, uh, when I say, uh, but those go into another account code. That's why I said right. by the account code. Okay. But these were planned reductions based on student enrollment, and there's yeah. no other teacher cuts involved in this budget. It, Except on the secondary side, I mean, we're, no, there is none in the budget, and as we said, there'll be realized, savings. There'll be realized savings from India as we go through the incentive, okay. and those, and if not, then it would be whatever we decide to do as far as layoffs. Okay, but there's a, that's but a, it's all it's enrollment. A separate conversation it's outside of this budget. enrollment driven. Okay. And, and this includes the addition of the music teacher? Is that, that yeah, that was on there. Yes. That's in mm -hmm. Um. So that was, that was my first question. And then the second one is how we're using our fund balance this okay. year. Um, because when you first introduced the budget back in January, we were using less of our fund balance and now we're using more of it. And how does that impact um, our taxes for this year and our 10 year projections? Um, thank you. I brought uh, my long term projections that I did on 3 30 and 23, so um, just two weeks ago. Um, um, for this year, like I said, 0.01%. Uh, ne next year is going to be, in my projections, between 4.5% and 5% uh, for the 24-25. For the 25-26, between 5 and 5 and a quarter. For 26-27, between 5 and a quarter and 5 and a half. Then it drops to between four and a half and, four, um, and five, and then it drops to a normal two percent, three 
of 3%. So based on my projections, I be, uh, we're going to be using, for example, um, this year, um, next year, uh, we will be using $2.4 million of fund balance. The following year, 4.6. The following, the following year, 5.1. The following year, 6.2, 7, and then back again at 5.4, and then 4.5. So today we have in our um, fund balance about 21 million dollars. So that's why that's how we are going to be using fund balance. Um, for example, um, our cessation fund. Um, this year is projected to be 12.3 million, next year 10.5, 8.6, 6.6, 4.5, and then it stops there. On the other hand, also, I'm taking into account that our pilot with, with Holtec um, will start going, uh, going up substantially in the year 20, 28, 29. We're having negotiations with them, and we're agreeing on how it's convenient for them to pay us pilot over a long, long period of time, and how it, it is convenient for us for them to pay us the pilots. And it's we are on the same page. We think that um, we're going to be able to achieve for both both parties, the goals. Um, the, one, the only thing I can tell you now, and I can say in public, is that um, Holtec wants to backload the payments. Um, I want them to backload the payments after the cessation fund, and after we run our cessation fund. Okay, my question was, concerning about um, whether we're artificially reducing the tax burden this year and how that'll affect the tax increases in the next couple of years. Because we're That's still gonna follow, it's um, hard to follow, I don't have the numbers in front of me, so it's okay, hard to follow. So the, uh, next year, we're expecting <coughs> between four and a half and four and three quarters. So oh, if, you take into, if you take into account that 2% is the regular, you know, it, it's, the way of the given inflation and everything is what any other school district can, you know, can increase. We are we're just increasing to make up the twenty million dollars that we lost from from Indian Point. We're only increasing two percent above above what any other district is going to increase their tax their tax rate. The following year it goes to five, the following year, five and a quarter, then it goes down again to five. So if you take into account that the regular increase for any school district is 2%, we're going to be between two and three percent of all for one, two, three, four, four years. And then we go back to the 2%. Okay, so we've been successful keeping it near zero this year, but moving forward, the community yeah, don't expect like near zero going forward. Okay. Yeah. And let me just also add one other thing that I, you should note right on the chart there at the very stop top of state aid. I don't think you want to count on 53% increase every year. Correct. Right. This We're is very off. unusual oh, right. Right. And if that happens. So again, as that one decreases along with some of the other, you've got to use even more fund balance to keep well, the state yeah. aid will eventually level off around. Yes. Um, it's it's not usually just doesn't double. make that kind of job. In my, in my projections, I expect uh, ne next year to increase um, state aid to $14.9 million because state aid is behind the wealth ratio by three years. So the wealth ratio, the, the reset of our wealth ratio based on pilot number one, because if you remember, um, one of the reactors was shut down the year before the other one. 
So next year, we get the well, the, the decrease in wealth ratio due to the second pipe. And then going forward, I expect an increase of about 2% in state aid, which is what we've been giving. Uh, we've been getting in the last 10 to 15 years besides the financial crisis. Thank you, that's all I have. Anybody else? The only thing I want, I just, I'd like to clarify a little bit around the contingent budget because um, we generalize, uh, bring forth a new budget reduction staff, increase in class sizes. Do we know how much money is this? Do we have an idea? Um, well, well the actually, because because of our um, our increasing tax levy so low, um, we we will only have to cut forty seven thousand nine hundred and twenty seven dollars. But, but there's a but. There's a but. That's all. If you remember in 2007, when the district was in contingent, uh, the administration back then put the first budget, and uh, it was defeated, and then came back with the same budget, and was defeated again. So if the community is sending you a message that it's too high, the idea is we need to cut more. You know, I wouldn't make the same mistake. Um, it was done in 2007. And then you can, you can say, okay, we're cutting 400,000. It's up to the board. But if it doesn't pass and then it doesn't pass again, then that's, that's where it gets into the risk of we can't have anyone on, on our premises. Exactly. Limiting buses, athletics, all of that is just hurts the community. at risk. Yes. Yeah, the community is dreaming. Yeah, so what Enrique is saying is that if the budget doesn't pass, don't just go back out with $50,000 lower, because that's yeah. all you have to do. You need to take a deep dive, because you don't want to end up with contingent budget. Right. And again, it, it really is like town of Cortland uses our fields. We can't do that. We can't allow it. So um, there's a lot of things that come with that. Any other questions for Enrique? OK. All right, so um, we have to vote on the budget to adopt it. Um, be it resolved that the Board of Education of the Hendrick Hudson Central School District, Town of Portland, and the County of Westchester be and hereby is authorized to expend the sum of $88,051,287 for the general budget and to levy the necessary tax therefor. I need a motion to approve or to adopt this budget. Motion. Can I have a second? All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right.